Okay, so let's get started. Uh, uh, this is Rahul, uh, your instructor from the Selenium training. As far as my experience is concerned, I'm having over 14 years of experience in software testing itself. Out of that, uh, more than 10 years in automation. I've worked on various automation tools like QTP, Selenium, uh, Appium, Protractor, Cypress, and uh, I have also uh, been involved in corporate trainings. I've given a lot of corporate trainings in uh, at Delhi, NCR. Uh, then out of uh, Delhi, I've given training in Mumbai, in Bangalore, even in uh, US, in New York, to a company named Shutterstock.com in uh, Seattle to Spoken Communications. Uh, so uh, I have trained uh, like a lot of people, a uh, lot of you might be knowing that I have my courses on different platforms as well, like uh, Udemy. So I'm a, I'm a very old instructor on Udemy uh, as well. So uh, I mean, that's pretty much about me. I, I hope uh, <coughs> most of you uh, who are attending this training are from a uh, testing background, like manual testing or automation testing, because uh, the course is specially uh, designed for uh, a person uh, who is very new to uh, automation and even for a person who is working as a manual tester and uh, is moving uh, uh, himself into automation and uh, being uh, like if I talk about Selenium, Selenium is uh, like a base uh, tool for automation. Anyone who gets started with automation uh, learns Selenium as the very first tool. And even uh, if we talk about uh, prerequisites these days, uh, even for manual testing, in case uh, you are applying uh, as, uh, as a manual tester, even uh, starting your career in manual testing as well, then if you search for openings in, on different job portals, you're going to find that Selenium is something which is uh, like a prerequisite. So uh, now uh, in today's session, we have uh, a mixed audience. There are people uh, uh, who are already enrolled and already done with the core Java part and is about to start with their Selenium sessions. And there are people who are joining us at the demo session. So our next two sessions will be common uh, because we'll be uh, talking dedicatedly about uh, the introduction of Selenium. Uh, we'll be learning some components of Selenium. And in the next two sessions, uh, we won't be needing very much programming knowledge in order to understand these concepts because these are the very basic concepts. From the next weekend onwards, we're gonna start, uh, like the people who are joining at the demo session, they're gonna start from the day one of their core Java and uh, people who have already completed the Java will gonna continue with their web driver sessions. But these two are uh, really interactive session. I mean, uh, you're gonna get really uh, good knowledge of different component components that we are going to integrate with Selenium because uh, just standalone Selenium will not gonna work. There are, there are so many things that we integrate with Selenium. So what all things you would be needing in your roadmap to automation as well. So all these things uh, will be actually studying uh, in these two lectures. So before we uh, get started, uh, like let me tell you about these webinar sessions. So in GoToWebinar, basically everyone will be on mute by default. In case you want to talk, then uh, you can type it in a chat box. You can see there's a question and a chat box uh, uh, in your screen as well. So you can simply type it in the chat box and I'll gonna revert you accordingly. And in case you want to talk to me directly, then just mention it in a chat box to unmute you. And uh, then uh, I can unmute you from here and you can directly uh, talk to me. But I really want these sessions to be interactive. Uh, you're not gonna feel like that you're taking an online uh, session or you may gonna feel like that you're watching some video. So I really want to make these sessions interactive. So it should be two-way communication. You'll, you should feel like that you're sitting in a class and you're taking training. So that is what uh, I really want from these sessions. Uh, there are a couple of people uh, who are not able to hear me. So this could be a reason, I mean, when you are connecting and uh, you select the audio as uh, like phone call <coughs> instead of computer audio. So you may not be able to hear me. Let me uh, type for them. Uh, connect audio option as computer audio. 
that in Kong. Else you won't be able to hear me. Right? So uh, just make sure that you are always connected to a computer or in case you are not uh, dialing from your uh, phone call and the numbers. Right? Okay, <clears throat> before we get started, do you guys have any, any question, anything that you want to discuss, any point that you want to discuss before we get started with training? You can type it in a chat box or uh, just let me know and I'll unmute you from here. Any, anything anyone who want to discuss before we get started? Okay. <clears throat> Will we get placement assistance also? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, we are going to work on some uh, live projects as well. And after this training, if you want, uh, if you're already working professional, then you should be able to justify your current two, three years of experience uh, easily in Selenium. And I'm going to help you uh, with interview questions, resumes, and the uh, groups. You will be added to the WhatsApp groups as well. So there are a lot of companies who get in touch with us for uh, openings related to automation. So we generally post these openings in the WhatsApp group. So you'll be familiar with what all openings are there in the industry. But if you thoroughly practice uh, whatever that's been covered in the course, you should be able to justify your practical experience easily. Duration of the course will be somewhere around uh, three months. Every Saturday and Sunday classes will be there and it will be two hours each. Right. Will we be covering, uh, will we be getting some KT on LU reporting? See, LU reporting, uh, we'll be using that reporting which is very popular in the industry and 90% of the projects that is working on, that is extent report. Now there are a lot of reportings available in the market, report ng is there, LU report is there. So most of things you're going to see in the video lectures as well, but the interactive report, the graphical report that we are going to cover in the live sessions will be uh, the extent reports. Okay, BDD part, I'll let you know, I mean, uh, see in this, in this live session of Selenium, we'll be covering uh, like the data driven part, the hybrid part, uh, the page object model, page factories. So these are the live frameworks that we will be covering in these sessions. And addition to this, you're going to get uh, access on the automation architect part, which will going to have that uh, uh, Cucumber BDD concept. So this is something that you're going to get access to. I'm going to let you know what all things that you'll be getting. So just be with me for some time. So if you go to all courses, so this is Automation Architect. So here uh, we have covered seven live projects and in this we have this Cucumber BDD and Cucumber Page Objects and Page Factory. So most of you guys uh, must be knowing that in case you are joining these live sessions, then uh, uh, like we are running some lifetime membership offer. So you are not going to get training only on Selenium. You'll be getting the API automation and other trainings as well. And in API automation, we implement the Cucumber BDD from scratch. So parallelly, we are also starting a batch of API automation from next weekend itself. So the timings will be uh, like 6 p.m. India time to 8 p.m. India time. Right now, uh, the Selenium is at 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. So in case you want, you can attend both the batches parallel as well. Because if we talk about current industry, then the combination of Selenium plus API is what required in the market. Now, what API is? I'll be explaining you in these sessions. So just be with me for some time. Let me handle some more questions. There, there are a lot of questions. Uh, Arna is asking placement only in India or US. Uh, I do get openings from uh, US side as well and Canada side as well. So I'll gonna forward those openings as well. 
Yes, uh, Isha, JMeter is also included. We are already running a batch of JMeter, which is about to end. And the batch is running somewhere around 4 p.m. India time. So next batch will gonna start somewhere around 6 p.m. India time. How about UK? Uh, like uh, UK, uh, I mean, I most frequently get openings for US and India, but at, uh, in case I get it for UK as well, then I'll gonna definitely forward it to you. Okay, Sunita so asking, will this course help me to overcome my five years career break? Definitely, Sunita, this is going to help you in case you are getting into the testing industry. And if you have expertise in these uh, uh, like tools, then uh, you should definitely be able to crack the interviews. Abbas is asking about Serenity. Serenity is right now available in a form of a video library. I have designed a complete course on Serenity as well. So guys, uh, with Selenium, you are actually going to get access on all the courses that you see on this URL. These are very, very detailed course. Even the latest uh, course that is Cypress. Uh, this is a modern automation testing tool. You're gonna get access to all these courses. In, the, in these courses, we are running many live sessions as well, and you should be able to join all live sessions. So I'll be explaining about these concepts at the end. Test TestNG Maven will also be covered in the Selenium classes. Right? So most of the general questions, we're going to take these questions, uh, uh, let's say at the end, uh, what all things we are going to cover, what is the entire syllabus. So. Uh, so we'll be covering Selenium, not Core. We are going to cover complete Core Java in this course. Before uh, the people who are joining for the very first time, before you go into the Selenium sessions, you will be uh, covering complete Core Java first. Just the next two sessions, in case you are very new to programming, just take these sessions as it is and try to see what level of Java that is uh, include that is actually required for Selenium. We don't need any advanced Java in order to work on Selenium. We just be needing the core Java basic concepts. So that is what you'll be checking in these two sessions that what level of Java is required. If you are very new to programming, if you don't have any understanding of programming, just take these sessions as it is. Take these sessions as a lightweight sessions. Don't take any pressure. I mean, we'll be starting from ABC of core Java from next weekend. So don't worry about it. Post this course, how much experience can you show? I mean, uh, like in case you are having a 10 years of experience as a manual tester, you should be able to justify at least three years in automation, but not standalone Selenium. You need to integrate API as well. So Selenium plus API should be there. Then you should be able to justify at least three, three plus years of experience easily where you can get the recordings of the session. So recordings of all the sessions will be uploaded over here, this section, Selenium online training recording from live sessions. If you go over here, you're gonna find uh, all the previous batches over here. So these are the recording. This is from batch 2021, who just completed their core Java 15 sessions. And after that, they are now uh, going to study Selenium part. So this way you'll be able to find all previous batch recordings. So classes, as the classes will be over the weekends, but during the weekdays, you can refer the entire course. And in case you get any doubt, you will be added to the WhatsApp group. You can directly reach to me as well for any queries. If a person does not have any experience into testing, see, uh, that's what I said. Even if you are entering into the testing field, this uh, selenium is like a base i mean uh, it's like a prerequisite so this is definitely going to help you now you can imagine if if, if there is an opening of manual tester for a beginner and if there are 100 people applying for the same and out of that you know automation as well then you'll be giving an added advantage yes we are going to cover customized report extend reports we are going to cover that Right. All right. So let's uh, get back to the course and then we're going to take the questions uh, in between. 
Okay, so now before we get started, what exactly is Selenium? Anything and everything that you know about Selenium, just let me know. What, what is Selenium? What do you understand by Selenium? What is Selenium? It's a testing framework. It's an open source. Okay. It's an open source tool testing framework and for automation for automation of what? For automation of what? UI. Exactly. UI as in the web based applications and only so it's an open source automation tool or a testing framework uh, for automation of ui or web based applications only only and only web based applications can be automated uh, using selenium no desktop based applications right you cannot automate any desktop based or any other application so what 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 all types of applications are there that we perform testing on like we perform testing on web based applications any anything else apart from web based we have mobile standalone just give me a moment guys people are saying that they didn't get meeting invite let me forward it to them. I've already forwarded. I think they didn't check the message. Give me a moment. Okay. So I got a lot of answers. So we have uh, desktop based applications, right? Which are standalone applications. We have uh, mobile applications. We have database applications client server so what is client server application so they, they could be in a form of a ui uh, like a web page or they could be in a form of a desktop right anything else apart from this that where we perform testing on api exactly so these are very very important i mean web services which we call it as web services so what all type of apis we have we have soap and we have rest any any more area that you can think of where we perform testing database i have written excel do we perform testing on excel we we write test cases so performance yeah i mean there are different types of testing as well we have performance testing we have security testing but when we are talking of, in terms of selenium Selenium is mainly for functional testing and most of things that we have mentioned over here are related to functional testing itself. Even if we talk about mobile applications, then we are going to perform functional testing, right? So penetration and uh, cloud-based testing and then performance testing, there are a lot of testing uh, that we uh, generally do and there are different different automation tools for that but generally we perform testing on these applications right even if we do performance testing we do performance testing of a web application or a desktop application or a mobile application or an api as well right even if we do security testing we do security testing on all these applications only right so the question was what all application that we can test right where we can perform functional security, regression, n number of testing we can perform on these applications. So these are the major applications, right? Where we can perform testing. And like we said, Selenium is for web-based testing only. Selenium is only for web-based applications. Means Selenium comes over here. Selenium can only perform testing on web applications. Cannot perform testing on desktop, mobile, database, web services. Then what is for desktop? Have you heard about any tool for desktop testing, desktop applications testing, QTP, exactly, which is also known as UFT these days, right? Tosca is there, Robot UI, right? RFT is there, 
n number of tools are there but selenium is not right how about mobile apm exactly apm is another very popular automation tool these days see a lot of answers are coming apm perfecto yeah perfecto is a paid tool c test is there monkey talk is there and number of paid tools are also there but since apm is uh, originated from selenium itself so apm is also completely open source right a person who knows selenium can easily work on apm right because selenium is open source open source means there is no license required to work on selenium it's completely free of cost whereas if we talk about qtp uft rft perfecto all these have heavy license fee right so that's the reason these days open source industry is very popular because uh, if you talk about selenium selenium uh, there are there are a lot of features that selenium supports so if i talk about uh, let, let's come back to selenium later on but before that anything you heard about database database we have different vendors like uh, sql is there mysql is there oracle is there big data is there hadoop is there right etl testing is there all these things are related to informatica is there all these things are related to database what about web services any tool postman soap ui correct rest assured yeah these are very popular soap ui and then rest assured Correct. So these are the things and there are different different automation tools available uh, to test all these uh, different types of applications. But if you talk about Selenium, Selenium is only for web based. But why Selenium is very popular? Why not QTP? Why not other automation tools as compared to Selenium? Why every prerequisite has got Selenium in it? Even a manual testing has got Selenium in it. Right. I mean, manual testing opening, you're going to find Selenium as a pre-request. Why not Postman as a pre-request or a rest assured as a pre-request? Why Selenium? It's, it's open source. That's true. OK, so supports all languages. That's true. So if we talk about features of Selenium, so it has got a multi language support, multi language. So what are languages it supports? It supports Java, C sharp, Python, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript, all major languages in the world are supported by Selenium. Anything else that Selenium support? Platform independent. It has got a multi-platform support. What all platforms? You can run your code on Windows, Linux, Mac, Solaris, iOS, uh, Android, all major OS are supported. Browsers, correct. What all browsers? All major browsers. So multi browser support. It works on Firefox. It you can run your code on Chrome. You can run your code on IE, on Safari, on Edge, on Opera. All major browsers are supported by Selenium. Right? Which company came up with Selenium? Like if I talk about QTP, UFT, uh, which company came up with QTP? Mercury. HP has later on acquired QTP from Mercury. Now it belongs to HP. So we say HP UFT, right? Later on, they have changed the name to UFT. HP Load Runner, right? Initially, it was Mercury QTP, Mercury Wind Runner, Mercury Load Runner. Same way. Some company came up with Selenium as well. Even it's a, uh, although it's an open source project, but still was initially started by some organization, by some person. Anyone knows? Which company? Sun? No. ThoughtWorks. Exactly. So Sansita is saying ThoughtWorks. That's the correct answer. So ThoughtWorks is the one who came up with Selenium. In the year two. 2004 which is like around 17 years now selenium is there in the market right in 2004 this project was started by a developer named jason huggins so he initially started this project 
And the very first component he launched, what all components are there in Selenium? How many components are there? IDE, grid, four, okay, web driver. Then, which is the fourth one? RC, okay, that's correct. So initially it has got four components. There was ID, there was RC, there was grid, there was web driver, right? So what are these components? What is ID, what is RC, what is web driver, what is grid? It will be studying about all these things in depth. After today, today's session, it will be very much clear to you what all these components are, right? Initially, when ThoughtWorks, when Jason again started this component, uh, like the Selenium, the initial two components he launched uh, with Selenium 1.0, the very first version of Selenium was launched with the version as 1.0. And the initial component were launched as IDE, then there was RC, and there was Grid. And then later on, Selenium 2.0 came into the market. So 2.0 got RC, IDE, web driver, and grid. This 2.0, see, 1.0, 2.0 are releases. It's like something uh, you may have seen in your software development lifecycle when, whenever there's a project or a product launch, it launches with some version, 1.0. And then if there is a technology change in that version or a major enhancement done, they launch the next version of that product. That is 2.0. Same way 3.0, right? A technology changes, then 3.0 came into the picture, right? So what is the current version of Selenium? What is the current version? 4.0? Is 4.0 officially launched? So what was the release date of 4? Three dot four nine. Anyone? What is the current official version? Anyone who knows what is three dot one four nine? So some is saying three dot four nine. Some is saying three dot one four nine. I didn't get any correct answer. Okay, Abbas is saying three dot one four one five nine. You. Missed. Oh, no. Okay, you have added it out. Yeah, that's the correct. That's the correct answer. This is the current official version. Three. That is three dot one four one dot five nine, which is Selenium three, and four is about to hit the market very soon. Right now, the four is currently at the beta version. Few days back, it was there in the alpha version. It started from alpha one, two, three, and has gone up till seven. And now they have uh, launched the beta version. So they are telling that very soon Selenium 4 is going to hit the market. But right now, companies are not working on Selenium 4. 90% of the companies are using Selenium 3 itself. There are some people who have migrated their project to Selenium 4, but still there are development going on in Selenium 4. So there are some challenges you may gonna encounter while using the latest version of Selenium. So the recommended version to use is Selenium 3. Selenium 3.0, which ended up on the release that is 141.59. This 2.0, was started in July 2011, it was officially announced. And this release went up to 2.53.1. This was the last release of Selenium 2. And then Selenium 3 was started. And 3.141 is the last and the most stable release, which is the current release and the companies are working on this. And now they are coming up with Selenium 4.0 very soon. Now, which is the website of Selenium, the official website of Selenium? Anyone? Selenium HQ. Okay, seleniumhq.org. Sansita, you are right. Anyone else? I just got three answers. Okay, Atul, you are right. Yeah, correct. So a lot of people, uh, 
are still uh, working on Selenium HQ. I mean, Selenium HQ or the previous website. Although if you type seleniumhq.org, it, it is going to navigate you to the new website itself. See, if I talk, if I type seleniumhq.org, it is going to move on the new website. The new website is selenium.dev. And you can see on the main website, the homepage itself, Selenium automates browsers. That's it. Selenium is only and only for web-based testing. No desktop and other applications. And if we go to this uh, downloads, you're going to see the latest stable version of Selenium is 3.141.59. And Selenium 4 is currently at beta 1 version. So it is not yet officially, Selenium 4 is not officially announced because right now there is still development and testing going on uh, for this version, right? But the latest stable one will be working on this uh, 3.141.59. And then I have also included some examples on Selenium 4 as well. So if you go to the, your course library, you're gonna see all the latest uh, major features of Selenium 4 I've already covered. So you're going to see examples from Selenium 4 as well, right? But 3.141 is uh, what we'll be majorly using. And whatever that we are going to use in Selenium 3.141, same functionality used to work in Selenium 2 as well. And same functionality will be working on uh, 4.0 as well. Just there will be more enhancement, more uh, locator techniques and other things that are added. Uh, that we're going to see uh, in Selenium 4 itself. So those will also be covered. Are we going to cover grid? Yes, we are going to cover grid as well. Right? So very quickly, what all these components are? In Selenium 1, we have IDRC grid. 2, we have IDRC web driver grid. What do we have in Selenium 3? What all components? What all components we have in 3? We have web driver grid, only web driver. We have three components except RC, exactly. So we have ID, we have web driver, and we have grid. RC is not there in three, right? Similarly, in case of four, we're gonna have ID, web driver, grid. These components will always remain there, right? Just RC is not there, RC was very old component. And the architecture, uh, when it was created, the architecture was not at all good. So that's the reason they didn't continue with RC and they have created another component parallel to RC, which is called as WebDriver. And WebDriver was started in a different organization. Initially, Selenium 1 was started in a different company like ThoughtWorks, who came up with Selenium. WebDriver is not created by ThoughtWorks. WebDriver was started by a different organization. Uh, Himanshu is asking duration of the course. Uh, it is going to take at least three months to cover all the topics, right? So a two hour session will be there every Saturday and Sunday from 8 p.m. India time to 10 p.m. India time. So most of the people are joining from US, Canada and uh, UK as well. So you guys can convert it in your time zone because I think there is some daylight saving is about to come as well. So just uh, try to convert it into your zone or the best thing is uh, the meeting invite that I'm going to send you. If you click on that meeting invite, it is going to show you the uh, timings as per your time zone, right? So yeah, just be uh, like looking at this stuff because uh, 8 p.m. India time is uh, not going to change. We are uh, keeping the session as 8 p.m. India time only. Okay, so I was talking about web driver. Who came up with WebDriver? Now, th there were a lot of flaws in uh, when this uh, RC was launched. Uh, there was a lot of flaws and due to which WebDriver came into the market. If I talk about ID, IDE is the very first component and this is only and only for record and play. Like every automation tool has got a record and play feature, right? Your QTP has a very huge feature. They have invested a lot of money in record and play stuff itself so that you need to write very less script and most of the things are recorded with uh, the record and play actions and you're gonna get the code and you can try doing manipulation with that code. But in case of Selenium, 
ID is a record and play feature, but this ID is not at all used in the industry. It's not like a very huge tool. It's a very small plugin that you're going to see it on your browser, something uh, like this. This is Selenium IDE. This is IDE. See. Now you can see it is, uh, the, uh, we got a lot of options uh, over here, record a new test in a new project. If I click on record a new test, it is going to ask me a project uh, name. Let's say I'm gonna write Google project, click on okay. And base URL HTTP google.com start recording. And you can see it's uh, launching the browser and over here you're going to see selenium ide is recording so whatever i'm going to type over here perform the action and then perform uh, some click over here so all the actions are being recorded in your ide if you look over here you can see all the actions are being recorded right now you can stop your test give it a name as let's say google test Click on OK, and then uh, just a moment. Then you can uh, run it from here itself. Just right click uh, here. You can export it here. This is the run button. If you click on run current test or run all test, if you click on this, your entire test will be executed again. So going to Google and then navigating, typing, and then it is going to perform click. So whatever actions that you have performed are being recorded. And this is something additional you, you need to handle. This is something called as push notification. So we have some additional script we, which need to be added in order to handle this push notification. You may gonna see that it may, we see it is trying to find this particular thing, but it's not able to find it. Why? Because of that push notification. So IDE mostly, it's for record and play. You can see the script has stopped the execution at this point of time, at the fifth line, and it is failed with some error, right? Because we need to provide, there, there are synchronization issues, synchronization as in the wait issues, there are push notification issues, a lot of challenges you may gonna see while you're working, while you're automating an application, there are a lot of things that you need to handle, right? And IDE is not at all a good tool to handle that. Most of the things may uh, be handled with some programmatically uh, like stuff. So for some of the thing, we need to add some JavaScript. Some of the thing, we need to write a little bit code in order to handle that. So what generally people do is, let's say we have recorded this script. Now I can right click on my test. So why that option is not showing, just give me a moment. Yeah, this is what challenge is. Uh, if you right click, you get an option to export the test. Initially, I was getting it. But I think I need to, just a moment. Yeah, there, there's some UI issue. Normally, we, we get it when we right click over here, just a moment. So this is saving project. That is the ID project only. Ah, just a moment. Why it's not showing the option to export? Yeah, there, there seems to be a UI issue. Normally, uh, we right click over here and we get that option. Give me a moment. Let me see if I can get it. Come on. See, we, we got this. Actually, the test was running. So we need to click on export. And you can see different languages are showing over here. So if I click on uh, Java J unit, and if I export this, and if I save it somewhere, let's say on desktop, And if I show it to you, 
so google this where it got saved yeah this is the file it's stored in a java format and if i open this you'll actually going to see some piece of code over here this is written in java and if you talk about this code this is not at all complex right don't think uh, it's a coding part so there must be some rocket science or a coding is very difficult i mean the coding in selenium is very very easy after 2 3 sessions you should be able to i mean find these things very simple see this is something like if i do driver dot get and if i provide a url it will make me to navigate uh, to a particular ur google.com driver.quit is something like closing the browser right similarly there there are a lot of things written over here finding element performing click on it for finding element send keys is for typing so this code is very simple once we start with our sessions you should be able to understand it easily now if we are automating some stuff and if we get stuck in between while using ide ultimately we have to jump to the coding part only right because everything cannot be automated using selenium ide there are a lot of components we have to integrate with selenium if i talk about these components that we have just seen like ide rc web driver grid these components are just 25% in your entire automation project there are a lot of things that we integrate we're going to talk about those stuff as well but selenium itself is just 25% so at times we need to integrate other stuff we need to add some additional stuff so those things are not supported by id that's the reason we need to switch to the coding part and if we talk about coding part coding in selenium is very very simple there are a lot of things you integrate with the coding part which you cannot do it with selenium id that is the reason it is not recommended to use selenium id if i list down what all components are there then you yourself will going to understand why selenium id is no we are using in the industry no one is working on this record and play because the coding part is much simple as compared to record and play you'll face lot of challenges while using id but using the coding part you will see that things will going to run very smoothly so that is what we'll going to take a look at in our today's session as well i'll going to show you some code in today's session as well right push notification uh, arvina is saying what is push notification push notification is something you may have seen that uh, uh, these days some websites uh, ask you to uh, allow push notification so that whenever there is some update in the, their website or maybe some new offer that comes in the website it actually pops up on your browser so that you should be aware of what all uh, like Uh, new updates are coming or what are new offers or new features are coming so that is why the push notification is uh, these days uh, you'll going to see most of the websites are showing that okay so isha is asking if a project is using selenium and there is some requirement to automate desktop application so how to do that with selenium you cannot automate but there are things you can integrate with selenium right i'll going to talk about that part as well so first we are starting with ui then i'll going to show you that whatever that we have listed over here all these things you can integrate in one single project and that is why i am calling selenium as a base tool if you know selenium you should be able to work on all these things you should be able to integrate all these things in one single project itself right but not using id so there are other if these components are 25% what all other components are there have you heard about anything else integrated with selenium apart from these four components himanshu is asking can we use rest assured and uh, web driver together yes we can yes isha test ng exactly so test ng is there anything else Jenkins, Maven, Apache POI, correct. So Maven, POI, Jenkins, Extend Reports. Okay, what all? Log4j, Cumber, Java Mail, 
exactly so log 4j mailing api cucumber auto it j unit j unit and test ng are similar and we have auto it we have sequely reporting we have a lure report correct okay apart from this anything else okay so a lot of things you have already mentioned that's that's great we have something else as well like git github is there gitlab is there right so jenkins poi a number of things are there database is there exactly so we need to do some sort of database testing we need to validate what all data that is showing on the on the ui is actually showing uh, on the database as well so at times we do the validation so database part is there screenshot capturing is a part of selenium itself okay so these are these are different components that we actually need to integrate with selenium but none of these components support all these things if we are talking about ide if you are using ID, you cannot use any of these things. In order to work on these things, these are related to your programming part, your Java part. These are your Java libraries, different Java libraries, right? If you are using record and play, you cannot use any of these libraries. You cannot generate extent report. You cannot use this Maven or log4j. What all these things will be covering about it in depth. Right, so don't worry about it. And in the training as well, we'll be covering all these topics in Selenium training itself. Right, so don't worry about it. So ID is just for record and play. Then for the programming part, these are the components which I use. RC web driver is for programming. And the last component is grid. So RC was the part of Selenium 1.0. It is actually uh, for the programming part. Now, programming, if I talk about programming, the very first thing uh, we have mentioned over here is that what is Selenium? Selenium is an open source tool. Selenium is not a tool. You cannot see Selenium. You cannot install Selenium. Right? Selenium is not like QTP, UFT, RFT, where we get a setup file, we double click on that setup file, it gets installed on our machine, provided the platform where we can do record and play, we can manipulate scripting. It's not at all like that with Selenium. Selenium is not a tool. You cannot see Selenium. There is no UI, there is no front end, no desktop application called a Selenium. If it is not a tool, then what exactly is Selenium? It's an interface, it's a testing framework, right? It's an API. It's a project. It's a set of libraries. That is what Selenium is. Normally we call it as an API. Selenium is an API. Set of jars. Set of jars, you call it as a jar in case you are using Selenium with Java. But Selenium is available in different languages. C Sharp, Python. If you are uh, working on Selenium with Java, it is uh, available in a form of a jar file. If you use C Sharp, it is available in a form of a DLL file. If you use uh, Python, it is available in a form of a PIP bindings. If you use Ruby, it is available in a form of a gem file. Similarly, all different languages, Selenium is available in a different, different format. Right? But these are all libraries. These are Java libraries. These are c -sharp libraries. These are Python libraries, Ruby library, PHP library. So set of jars is basically library. Selenium is collection of libraries. Yes. And a collection of library is actually called as an API. Right? Now, what is an API? What do you understand by the term API? What is an API? 
anyone what api consist of what do we have in api if you are saying set of libraries what what are there inside those libraries application programming interface very true but that is a full form right so what is there inside application programming interface we have classes we have methods we have inter okay uh, isha is saying it's an interface which allows two application to talk to each other that's true uh, but uh, what con uh, is there inside that interface so in inside that interface we have collection of classes we have collection of interfaces methods functions yes no ui right it is basically a code that is written inside one single project and then you are accessing the functionality of that project in some other project so let me take uh, a very simple example that i generally take in all my demo sessions so uh, let's say i am a java developer and i work with some xyz.com and here i got a task that i need to design a calculator now in a calculator there are various uh, uh, operations available i can add something i can subtract something i can divide something multiply something and so on there are a lot of operations in the uh, in calculator and as a developer i need to design these operations so what i'll be doing uh, i'll if, since i'm working in java so i'll be creating a class i'll be creating a class with a name as calculator uh my voice is breaking so shar is saying guys is it for everyone else as well are you guys able to hear me it's clear okay tushar i i believe uh, like uh, you need to check at your end i believe there is no issue for others okay thanks guys thanks for confirming okay so uh, i said i need to create a class with the name as calculator now i hope everyone understand or must have heard uh, sometime in your career that there is something called as a class or a function or an object is there anyone who is very new to programming and uh, does not even know what is a class we we are just going to cover basics don't worry about the programming part just take it as a very light session i just wanted to check i mean how many of you know uh, like uh, i i believe you guys are familiar with uh, what a class is you must have studied uh, in your graduation like c c++ i believe everyone have studied c c++ during your graduation is there anyone uh, who have not studied any programming okay i is, i can see ankit is saying no tejasvi is saying uh, you have not studied even even on on your own have you ever tried looking at some uh, c c++ basic java ever tried you have you at least heard about uh, calculator ankit is saying java yes i did take class asp.net that's fine any programming language you may have studied because in in selenium we are not going to discuss anything on advanced programming concept we are not developing any application there is a project which is already developed and which contains lot of classes lot of method lot of code we just need to call those classes we are not creating a new code we are not creating a new project we are just calling the existing project and in order to call that our basic programming concept should be very clear what is a class what is object what are basic if else loops arrays basic oops concepts so these are some of the concepts which 90% of you must have studied uh, during your gra graduation or if you may have done any any course related to any programming language you must have studied because basic concepts remain same in all programming language just the syntax change there there could be a different syntax of uh, creating a class creating a different setting up variables in python and uh, setting up a variable in java right but you need not to worry about it for the beginners will be starting abc of java from the next session right and people uh, who have already completed java you should be able to understand these things easily so you if you even if you have heard about all them don't worry just 
try to digest these two sessions as it is right because these will be repeated once you are done with the java session so don't worry about it okay so what do we have inside a class let's say calculator is a class what do we have inside calculator class variables methods functions great collection of methods correct very true okay himanshu uh, you have a question yeah you can ask it constructor good okay so a lot of you are correct so majorly uh, if i talk about a class a class is a collection of all these things itself we have a lot of variables functions data members methods methods and functions uh, are same thing uh himanshu uh, fees of course i'll be i'll be sharing it uh, sharing all the details at the end of this course so let us not uh, distract from the topic that we are discussing so these things i'll be mailing it to you as well don't worry about it right so uh, yes we have constructor method lot of other things as well so if i am talking about calculator as a class and i need to implement all these functionality inside this class so i'll be creating all this functionality in a form of a function function or a method both are same right in java we call them as functions in c c++ we call it as uh, in java we call it as, it as method in c c++ we call it call them as functions right so functions and methods both are same so java majorly we call them as method so i'll be creating a method called as addition in this addition method i'll going to write some code uh which is going to add some numbers same way i'll going to design a method called as subtract then divide then multiply and so on so one by one i'll be designing all these methods and i'll be writing some code inside subtract i'll going to write a piece of code if you call this subtract method it is going to subtract some numbers if you call multiply it is going to multiply some numbers so this is how i'll be designing a calculator project now once a project is designed i want to test if all these functionalities are working fine or not so i want to call this addition method or addition function from this calculator class in order to make sure this is this is working fine or not so what is the syntax of calling this addition method from this class how to call a method from a class what is the syntax main method yeah, we write a code inside main method that's when creating object create an object of a class very true how to create an object of a class how to do that what is the syntax new keyword shall i write new after that give me the complete syntax just type the complete syntax calculator calc equal to new calculator that's correct so it should be calculator calc equal to new calculator this is the syntax we actually used to write in order to create an object of a class and once the object is created we call the method by saying calc dot add and if you execute this code it is going to execute whatever that is written inside the addition method if a code is written to add some numbers it is going to add some numbers same way one by one you can call a method calc dot subtract calc dot divide calc dot multiply and so on but in order to call any of these methods first you need to create an object and this is the statement of creating an object now in this statement what is an object what is an object inside this statement whatever that i have highlighted what is an object in this statement calci calculator lot of calci answers are there calci is a variable new calculator calci is a reference is an object so lot of people are saying calci is an object i can see 70% people are saying calci is an object 
and there are some people who are saying new calculator is also an object. Okay, some are saying calculator is also an object. So everything cannot be an object, right? Either this calculator is an object, either calc is an object, either new calculator is an object, or this new is an object. Calculator is a class, okay? This, what is this calc? It's a reference variable. And what is this? Uh, equal to what do we call this equal to as operator what type of operator assignment operator exactly what is new what is new it's a keyword correct and what is this calculator it's a constructor correct so if this is a constructor this is a keyword this is an assignment operator this is a variable and this is uh, this is basically called as a type. Although it's a class name, but we call it as a type, type like a data type. So where is where is the object? Where is an object then? See, these are very basic concepts and but very important to understand. Because I can see 75% of the people are saying Calc is an object, but it's not an object. It's a reference to the object. An object is always created when we say new calculator. This is where the object is created in a memory and assigned to the reference. The address of that, this is basically the address of that uh, object. This holds the address of an object. This variable is holding that value. And every variable in Java must have some type. So this is called as a type. Right. So we're going to see these things practically as well. Although uh, when we started, we directly started with Notepad. Previous time people used to write Java code in Notepad as well. But now time has changed. There are many editors available in the market with uh, artificial intelligence. If you're not good in coding, these editors helps us a lot while writing code. If uh, let's say there are 100 methods inside a class, we need not to learn all those 100 methods. We simply put calci dot and it gives us the list of all the methods and we can choose it from there. Some editors are paid, some are open source, like IntelliJ is there, NetBeans is there, WebStrom is there, Eclipse is there. Eclipse is uh, one of the most popular editor, very widely used and completely open source as well. So we'll be using Eclipse. So the prerequisite to get started with Selenium is that we need to have Eclipse as well as Java available on our machine. These are the two things. These are the two things that we need before we need to get started with Selenium. And then we just need to add Selenium. That's it. The prerequisite is completely open source. No license required. Right. Anything that we are going to integrate with Selenium, we are not going to require any license for that. Everything will be open source. The latest version of Java is Java 15, which is not at all recommended to use. If you use this latest version, you may gonna encounter a lot of challenges while integrating other components. One of the most stable version of Java is JDK 1.8. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. So this is what you would be needing. You'll be needing a development kit so that you can write some coding. Java comes in two parts or we can say three parts. One is JDK, something it's called as JRE, something is called as JVM. Now what is JVM? We're going to talk about it later on in the Java sessions. But these are the two important things. JRE is basically called as a runtime environment. Normally in most of uh, the machines in uh, the MacBooks and other operating system, Java is by default installed. So this JR is by default installed, right? JR is basically required to run Java applications. Even if you're not developer, you want to run some Java application, then you need this JRE. But if you want to develop something, you want to write the code, you want to use the Eclipse editor, you need this JDK. Once you download and configure this JDK, JRE automatically comes with uh, JDK. So you need not to separately download uh, this JDK, uh, JRE, right? JDK consists of JDK plus JRE plus JVM. JVM is basically Java Virtual Machine. What is that? We're going to talk about it later on. 
right so uh, this is the very first pre request let us see how we uh, quickly we can uh, get this lot of you might be having it on your machine but there are some configurations that you need to do as in you need to set up some environment variables that is what we will be looking at so we will simply need to say download jdk 1.8 because if you type download java you may end up downloading the latest version in case any one of you have a latest version of java i would recommend you to go to control panel whatever java version that you see uninstall it completely and then nothing will going to hamper your uh, like nothing will going to harm your project uh, or the uh, or your operating system so don't worry about it it's a very simple installation just uninstall it go to this website from oracle and if you go down you can see uh, this is the development kit available for linux mac solaris windows all operating system available windows if you are on a 64 bit you will be installing this if you are on 32 bit you will be installing this just a exe file now these days what happen is if you click on this exe file oracle may gonna uh, may not gonna directly download it you need to go to uh, the oracle website and you need to sign up sign up just create a simple username and password and then you should be able to download it i think i have already signed up so it may be downloading it or otherwise uh, not then see it is taking me to the oracle login page so here i need to create a uh, create an account a simple username password and then i should be able to download the exe file right so it it comes as a exe file if you see over here this is a exe file it's a exe file installation is very straightforward just double click on it next 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 and java gets installed on your machine that is the only thing required there is no hard installation i mean uh, it's, it's a very simple installation when i saying that i have uh, java 15 you need to uninstall it uninstall it completely from control panel then install jdk 1.8 right because 1.8 is the most stable version a lot of things everything is uh, can be easily integrated using 1.8 so maximum companies are using 1.8 itself for selenium so once you install it you're going to see uh, java inside your c drive c drive program files and you're going to see a folder of java created over here If you open this, uh, you're going to see JDK and you're also going to see JRE. I mean, somehow it is not uh, showing on my machine because uh, it is uh, somehow it has moved over here. Right. This I messed up during the installation time. But since I've configured my environment very correctly, I am I'm not facing any issues. But what happens once you install Java, you're going to see one folder of JDK over here and one folder of JRE over here. You need not to do anything with JRE. You just need to go inside JDK folder. And if you open this bin folder, you're going to find Java over here. This is where your Java exists inside the bin folder. Now, very first thing, since a lot of things require Java to be uh, installed on your machine, like Eclipse, you cannot run Eclipse if Java is not there on your machine. So whenever you are installing or configuring those programs, they may be looking for the Java path on your machine. And what we do, we configure Java on a global path, on, on some global path, so that if we use Jenkins, if we use Maven, if we use Eclipse, anything that uh, requires Java, they can look at that particular location. For that, we need to set up some system environment variables. How to do that? Just right click on your PC. Right click on your PC, go to properties. Here, look for advanced system settings. And this is where you get your environment variable. There's a shortcut in case you don't want to go through this way. Just type edit in your search box, edit. See edit system environment variable, click on this. And you should be able to reach the screen directly. Click on environment variables. Now, here you see two things. One is user variable, one is system variable. You should not be doing anything inside user variable. You'll be configuring it over here inside system variable. Create a new new variable with the name Java underscore home. 
So guys, if you are doing it parallelly with me, I, I don't uh, want that anyone of you should be writing the code or uh, doing the things parallel because everything is being recorded. Once the session is done, I'll be sharing the recording with everyone so that you can practice the same stuff on your machine, right? So don't practice it parallelly. Just try to understand the concept and wherever you're not able to understand, you can stop me in between and I'll gonna explain you again, right? So just the concept should be very much clear to you. And then you can practice it during the weekdays by watching that particular video. So variable name Java home and variable value should contain the root folder path. That is uh, this JDK path. This is the root folder. So copy this path and paste it here and click on OK. So Java home and root folder path. So Java home basically is a variable. This is what it is created and it is holding the JDK folder path. Then you need to look for something called as a path variable. Edit this. This is something which is, you can see a lot of settings already configured over here. At times you install any particular program or at times you uh, are installing a OS as well. Then a lot of things are pre-configured over here. You can see system 32, your windows. So don't delete or modify these things. Otherwise you may uh, harm the existing running program or you may corrupt your windows as well. These are very crucial settings. You just need to click on new and at the end type percentage Java underscore home percentage. When you type this, it is going to bring this value over here. The one that you have created for Java home. This is the JDK folder. This value will actually going to come over here. And Java is where? Java is inside the bin folder. This is where the Java is. So you need to provide the path as backslash bin. That's it. Like I've already done it over here. I'm not going to redo it. So I'm deleting it. So this is already configured. Once you're done with it, click on OK, click on OK and Java is successfully configured. Now go to command prompt and check your Java is there or not on your machine. Just type Java hyphen version should show you the actual version of your Java on the machine. Mine is one dotted, which is the most stable version. See, uh, Veena is asking, I have a project in Eclipse. Uh, if I uninstall Java 15 and reinstall 18, is there a way I can save your, uh, I can save my project? See, all the projects are not saved inside Eclipse. They are saved on your physical directory, right? It could be C drive or D drive. In case you are replacing Java, whatever version of Eclipse that is supported by 1.8, just install that version and then import the project into that workspace, into that project library. So your project will not go anywhere, right? Uninstalling Java will not gonna take your coding. So don't worry about it, right? You're just switching between the versions, so don't worry. So once Java is successfully configured, the next thing is we need an editor where we can write the code. I'll let you know the steps, how you can import your existing projects as well. So don't worry about that part. Okay, so now next we need an editor. So we're gonna say download Eclipse. So from here we'll be downloading, uh, we're gonna go to this particular link. And uh, latest one, I don't recommend you to install this because this latest one is not supported by JDK 1.8. So you need to go to download packages. Go to download packages. And from here, you should be down, you should be clicking on this. See more downloads Eclipse 2020 So this is what you will be needing. This is the most stable version 2020 And over here, see Eclipse is just an editor. It is supported by a lot of languages, not just Java. You can write C, C++, PHP, Python, Ruby, all this coding you can do it in Eclipse. We need Eclipse for uh, simple Java purpose only. So you could download either the first one or the recommended one is this Eclipse ID for enterprise Java developer. This is one that comes with a lot of inbuilt plugin as well. So I would recommend you to download this one, this Eclipse. And 
based on your operating system, Windows, Mac, Linux. So I'm on a 64 bit. I have downloaded this one. Once you download this, you're going to get a zip file. A zip file will be something like this. So I have stored it inside a folder softwares. And here you're going to see this is how you're going to get a zip file. Once you unzip it, you're going to get a folder like this. Eclipse. And these are the files that you're going to see. Nothing installable in Eclipse. This is your application. Just double click on it. We're actually going to launch your Eclipse. I have 2019-12 version. You can download 2020-03. So once you open Eclipse, if Java is not configured, you're going to get an exception. You're going to get an error over here itself, a blocker saying that Eclipse cannot be launched. You first need to configure Java. So first you need to configure Java, then launch Eclipse. Here it is asking you for the workspace. Now workspace is a location where we generally maintain our project code. Whatever coding that we are going to do will be stored at some location on our machine. That is what workspace is. So I generally give this workspace with uh, the batch name. So I'm going to name this batch as uh, batch March 2021. So I'm going to say web driver batch. March 2021 and click on finish. So whatever code that we're going to write, I'll be uploading the code along uh, next to the video itself on the portal itself, right? So you can watch the video and can download the code and import it in your Eclipse. Okay, let it launch. How to import, uh, Arvina, I'm going to show it to you how to import. Let us first create some project and then I'll show you how to import any project, right? So this is what a welcome screen you'll get. Uh, just click on this. We're going to close it. This is how your Eclipse will going to look like. Here you'll be maintaining your project hierarchy. Here you can write some code and here you're going to get the output of that code. So first we'll be creating a new project in order to get started with uh, programming or testing anything we first need to create a new project so I'm gonna create a project from here I'll be selecting a simple Java project right because what we are doing right now we are understanding what an API is and for API I started as a Java developer and I have to create a calculator and for that I did something like this I created a class I created methods and I did it in notepad now I'll be doing the same thing in Eclipse so let us see how we can do that so I'll go to Eclipse, select Java project, click on next. And here we need to provide some uh, project name. It could be any name. So I'm going to name it as C project. You can give any name over here and click on finish. That's it. Click on open. And you can see a uh, project created over here. If you open this project, you're going to see uh, one SRC folder and one JRE system library. What is the JRE system library? This contains some internal Java classes. Normally what happens is in case if you have ever worked on C, C++, you may be knowing that we need to include some header statement like include codenew.h, studio.h. Similarly, when you work in Java, you need to add some import statement, some import uh, uh, math.java library, some uh, java.util library, and number of libraries are there, right? Whichever project you are working on, you need to add, import all these libraries, right? In case you're working on Notepad, you need to do all these things manually. But if we are working on Eclipse, all these things will be automatically handled. All the internal Java classes are automatically mapped to your code, to your project basically. If you have created a Java project, these are all Java internal classes. If you use any of the Java internal class, you need not to add import statement. Everything will be automatically done. That Eclipse will gonna help you. 
you simply need to focus on creating your own code your own class and every code is written inside src folder that is called as a source folder so i'll just right click on it and the very first thing we'll be doing is creating a new class so this is class click on this and give any name over here the class name it could be any name as i'm working on calculator so i'm going to name this class as calculator with capital c this is very important if you write it with small c it should not matter you're not going to get any error but there are some coding standards that we need to follow that everyone follows in this industry something called as camel casing which is class name always starts from a capital letter right so whenever you're creating a class it should always be a starting from capital letter and then check this public static void main and click on finish and you're going to see uh, a basic coding that shows up over here and let me increase the font size so a lot of things that you can see over here this is a, a the very basic code i'm going to remove the comments these are comments we can remove them now you can see something in reddish color something in black color all these reddish color stuff are predefined keywords in java right we have something called as public private protected these are called as access modifiers or access specifiers then we have static non static we have void int string other return type now what are these things people who are very new to programming need not to worry about it we have one one lecture on all these concepts what is access modifier what are static non static return types method this thing is called as a method a function a by default method inside a class anything you want to execute in java should be written inside this class in inside this method this is called as a main method we call it as a main method right anything we need to execute must be inside this so by default if i talk about uh, like people who have worked on c how to how to print in c how to print in c anyone how do we print in c so i know you may have worked a lot long time back on c c++ but still i want to check your knowledge how to print in c print c no print f print l and no c out no it's print f basically right i got one correct answer print f nitish and himanshu too great how to print in c++ nitish correct how about others c++ correct c out correct that everyone knows no chanky that's not for c++ that's for java now how to print in java that everyone knows great system out print ln great so system out print ln the very first thing of any programming language is to print hello world right so this is the run button after writing this if i click on the run button save it and you're going to see that hello world is printed this is how we print it right it's a very basic stuff i know most of you must be knowing it right but uh, we're not here to print hello world we are here to implement a calculator and in a calculator there are various functionalities available various methods available first method first functionality i'll be designing uh, as add i'll be creating a method with the name add so some syntax is there don't worry about the syntax but this is like a method and a method name always starts from a small letter see even a java has created a method here uh, java has created a method with a name as main and it starts with a small letter class always starts from a capital letter so as i said there is something called as camel casing let's say there is a name uh, the dark knight and i want to create it as a class so i'll be creating it like this if if i create it like this this is not readable right there are three words over here the dark and then knight 
So if I want to make it readable, if it is a class name, it starts with a capital letter. Anything joining must be in caps, dark night. This is what is called as camel casing. If I want to create it as a method, it starts with a small letter. Anything joining will be in caps. So this is what is called as camel casing. And all your Selenium projects, any Java project that you're going to use are following the same coding practices, right? So it's not like if I create this with a capital letter, I'm going to get some error. I'm not getting any error, right? But it is a better coding practice so that next time if any person is reading your code or if you're reading a code of any developer, you should be able to understand, okay, this is a class and this is a method. So that is why these coding uh, standards are being implemented. Yeah, you can do that thing as well. Uh, uh, like. Sonal, instead of uh, uninstalling 15, you can install uh, <coughs> Java 8 and point your environment variables to Java 8. But I would still recommend if 15 is not required, then don't uh, keep it for the time being. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Uh, Himanshu, we'll, we'll gonna do this thing later on. First, I'm going to write a very simple code. There are some people who don't even know anything in uh, like a ABC of Java. So I'm gonna start from very scratch, right? People who are familiar, little bit familiar or who are done with the Java session, just be patient for uh, today's session. From tomorrow, we're gonna pick up some good topics, right? We're gonna see a lot of integrations. But these things are also very important to understand the base, what is an API and how we're going to consume that API. So this is also a very important concept. Okay, so in addition, I'm going to write some code so that if I call it, it is going to add some numbers. Right now, we are not familiar with programming, let's say. So I'm just going to print something. I'm going to print adding some numbers. So once you call this method, it is not going to add anything. It is just going to print, adding some numbers. Same way, I'm going to create uh, some more methods over here. After add, I'm going to create a method called as subtract. It is going to print subtracting some numbers. Then divide, it is going to print dividing some numbers. And then multiply. It is going to print multiplying some numbers, right? So let's say I've, I've completed the entire calculator project and added all the functionality. Now I want to test. I want to call this addition method. How to call it? By creating object of calculator class. And how we have created that? We'll be doing that thing inside this main method. So let's see what code we have written. We have written something like this, calculator calc equal to new calculator. Let me copy this and paste it over here and no errors. The code is actually correct, right? I didn't get any error. Now, if I do calci dot, see, I'm able to access all the methods. I get this addition method, division method, multiplication method, right? And subtraction method. I, I got all the methods. If I say calci dot add, and if I run this, See, it has executed adding some number. And same way, if I call other methods, calci dot uh, subtract, calci dot divide. One by one, I can call all the methods from this class. Multiply. And if I run this, save and run it, you can see the entire functionality is executed. Quite simple, right? There is nothing complex that I have done as of now. Just created a class, created few methods, and call them by creating an object of this class, something like this, right? Now, th there is one more method, uh, one more method which is having the same name as of the class name. What we call it as? A method having a same name as of the class name. What we call it as? Constructor. Constructor, correct. What are constructors? So as I'm saying, it's like a method. I can write some code over here as well. I can write something like calling constructor, right? And now let me call this method as well. 
I've called add, I've called divide, multiply, divide, uh, subtract by saying calci dot add, calci dot subtract. And then I'll now I'll be calling calci dot and the name is calculator. I'm not getting it. See, I'm not getting any calculator over here. Why? Because this is not a method. I cannot call it like explicitly like this, like other methods. It default comes. It initiates variable. What are constructors? So constructors are like a method only, but it's it's not actually a method. It has got a same name as of the class name. And it is automatically called as soon as you create an object of a class. So as soon as you create an object, the very first thing that is called is a constructor. Even if you don't call these methods, if you don't call these methods, this is where we are creating an object. If I click on run, you can see it is automatically called. You need not to explicitly call it. As soon as you create an object, the constructor is automatically executed. Now let's come back to the same uh, question. What is an object inside this statement? Many people were saying calci is an object, right? Let's assume calci is an object. What I'll do, I'll, I'll just remove this part. Still a valid statement, right? There are no errors. If, what if we have more than one constructor, then uh, we can have an overloaded constructor as well. That concept will gonna come once we uh, study about overloading. We can have more than one constructor as well. Then you may need to provide an argument, right? So that, that's a little uh, advanced topic. We'll be covering it later on. Okay, so guys, uh, this is a correct statement. Now let's assume this is an object. If this is an object, if I run this, your constructor will be called, right? Let me know, if I run this, will the constructor be called or not? If you are saying this is an object and if I run it, then the constructor should be called. See, now I'm getting 100% uh, no that constructor will not be called, right? Because this is not an object. If I run this, see, nothing called, right? So this is not an object, Kelsey is not an object. Now let's do one thing, uh, let's remove this. See, still it is a valid statement. Now tell me, if I run this, will the constructor be called? Yes, yes, no, 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 yes. So still I got 50%, no, 50%, yes. See, remember what, what we discussed over here. An object is always created whenever we say new calculator. So if I run this, you're gonna see that the constructor is called, right? So this is where the object is. This is what is creating an object, new calculator. Now, if the object is created by new calculator, then why we need calculator calci? What is the need of writing this? Why we are writing like this? We should not write this. We should only write new calculator. Why, why is calci required? For methods? To call methods? Correct. So if we don't have calci, then how can we call calci.add, calci.subtract, calci.divide, right? We need that calci to call the methods. It means if I don't have calci, then I cannot call add divide, right? Correct? If I don't have that reference, I cannot call methods. Or can I? Can I still call the methods without that calci? See, a lot of no's. There are some yes as well. How? How can, how can I call a method without that reference, without that variable? Static, uh, f forget about static, non-static right now. I'm talking about the methods that we have created. Can we call those methods without calci? No. See, a lot of no's. Come 
come on no yes all knows i can still call the method without that calci see how new calculator dot add and if i run this save this run this you can see adding some number is called right i can still call a method like this with object dot method now what if i i need to call division method yeah that that's correct mayurika constructor will be repeated all the time so if i want to call division i'll be doing it like this new calculator dot divide new calculator dot multiply new calculator dot subtract right i can still call all the methods but i need to write new calculator means i am creating an object again and again if you see constructor is called 1 2 3 4 times it is it means that four objects are created in a memory and if we have 100 methods to call we end up creating 100 objects in a memory which is not correct which is like wasting the memory right so that's what we don't want so what we want is only one object to be created and all the methods should be referred from the same object reference so what we did wherever object is created we need to store this uh, the address of this object into some variable i can write create any variable i can say abc equal to this i can say xyz i can even say x equal to this i can say obj equal to this or we generally give it a meaningful name so we call it as calci right it's just a variable name you can give any name over here and we know that every variable must have some type like if i'm storing a value 100 into a variable value equal to this what should be the type of this variable what should be the type of this variable int exactly in integer exactly so i'll be giving it like int right can i give string over here instead of int can i can i write string string value equal to 100 no it will not be stored right we're going to get some error see i can give if i put it inside double quotes exactly so if i write this thing inside double quotes this means string but what if i have a value hello can i store it in, inside int can i store this inside int no it will not be stored right so every value must have its own type if a value is a string value it will be stored inside string type if a value is a uh, numeric it will be stored inside int type so but uh, if i talk about string what is string then this is uh, some value that we are storing this is a variable and what is string what is string over here data type collection of characters apart from data type string is also a class in java exactly string is a class in java so if this is a class if you are saying this is a class and this is a variable or could be a reference variable then if i say value dot i should be able to access all the methods of string class you can see all these methods are coming from string class right so string is basically a class in java if you mouse over onto string string will tell you string class string is actually a class in java and this is a reference variable or an object reference and when you do dot then you get access to all the methods same way when you cannot store a numeric value into a string you cannot store a string value into an integer now what you are storing is you are storing this value into this variable can the type be int can i write int it will not work right neither int will work nor string will work the type has to be of the same class type so it has to be of calculator so see this is called as type a class could be a type type could be anything a type could be uh, a class a type could be uh, an interface now what is an interface don't worry about it right now we'll going to take that uh, in a later lectures there are a lot of data types we'll be studying about all those in java but this thing is actually called as a type 
this is a variable, a reference variable. This is an assignment operator, right? This variable is assigned with this value. This new is a keyword and this is a constructor. And this is what is creating an object, right? So that's what the very basic concepts. And now if you call Kelsey dot add Kelsey dot divide Kelsey dot subtract Kelsey dot multiply, save it, run it. You're going to see only and only one object is created. Constructor is called only once. All the methods are referred from the same object reference, right? So this is a very, very basic concept of how to create an object, how to call a method. Now, let's say being a developer, I have designed a calculator project. And in this addition method, I've written some 500 lines of code. Now, what I want is uh, if someone else has to do some addition or division or multiplication, he should not recreate the entire project. I've, I've already created this. I've written a very complex code. I've created a very good project. If someone wants to do addition division, he should not recreate the project. So I want to launch this calculator as a free project in the market. I want to contribute into the market. I am going to create this as a free project without any license. So I'll, I can say it's, it's, it's an open source project. Open source does not only means that it's free. It's free plus anyone can contribute into the development of this project as well. Next time, let's say some, someone comes to me and, and say that uh, I really like your project. I want to add some more functionality to this project. I want to add a method for calculating square root, percentage, and number of other things, then he's most welcome. And if someone wants to use it free of cost, then he can use it free of cost. There is no license for it. So I want to publish this project into the market so that everyone, anyone from across globe can use it. So what I did, I just uh, right clicked on this project and I've gone to export. And I've selected this Java clicked on jar file. I'm exporting it as a jar file because in Java jar file is what we generally generate. It is called as a Java archive. Click on next, give some project name. I'll name it as calculator 1.0, the very first version of my project dot jar. And I'll save it somewhere, let's say on my desktop. Save, finish. Let's go to desktop. See, this is what the calculator project is. Now, can I double click on it and install it on my machine? <laughs> it, it's not installable, right? I cannot install it. With this jar file, you'll only gonna come to know what all classes are there, what all methods are there. If the developer has uh, not shared the code with you, you'll not be able to uh, see the implementation, but you should be able to call addition division with the help of this jar file by creating object of calculator class, right? Normally in an open source project, people give away their code as well because open source means anyone can read the project and contribute into the development part. Now what I did, I uploaded this jar file on my website so that uh, anyone from any part of the world can go to my website, download this jar and can access the functionality of calculator. And then after doing this, I left my current organization where I implemented this calculator project. So I'm going to close this project, uh, close. And I joined a new company. I joined a new company, a new organization, again as a Java developer. And this time, let's say I joined American Express. So I joined MX, right? They also have a Java project, a banking project, a banking domain, right? which let's say their website, their banking domain is implemented in Java itself. And since I joined in between, there were many classes uh, that were there inside their project. There was a class with the name as banking. So some developer has created a class with the name as banking. And uh, there were some methods that were created like to calculate profit, to calculate loss. So some of the methods were already there. 
in their Java project. And I was hired in between of this project. Now, they asked me to implement a functionality that could add salaries for n number of employees. So something like I need to implement a method called as add. Now, if I talk about this addition method, this is similar to what I have created in my previous organization, XYZ organization. Now I need to implement the same method over here. I can again rewrite the entire code, but that was like 500 lines of code with very complex logic. I can write it, but it may take me days to finish it. But why should I add that much effort when this is already available in an open source project in calculator project free of cost? I can simply access that functionality and implement it here. But how will I do that? I'll go to that website, download their jar file. After downloading the jar file, I'll import that jar file in American Express project. How? Right click, import. Uh, import, import, import. Uh, no, I'm creating a new project, I guess. So right click, go to build path and click on add external archives. Click here and select the jar file. So this is the jar file. Click on open and see it added as a reference library. If you expand this jar file, you should be able to see one folder inside it calculator class. See, I'm able to see that class, calculator class. If you open it, I'm able to see all the methods implemented inside that class, but I'm not able to see the code inside addition method. And I don't worry about it. Whatever logic it is written inside addition method, whatever complex code is written, I'm not worried about it. I know that this addition is going to add some numbers. So I just need to call this addition from calculator class. How are we gonna call it? simply by creating an object of that class. So I'm going to create an object calculator, cal C equal to new calculator. See, I'm able to create an object. I didn't get any error. Why I didn't get any error? Because I have this jar file available over here. If I remove this jar file, if I go to build path and remove it, my project is not able to understand what this calculator is. If I do a mouse over here, See, it is saying cannot be resolved to a type. See, calculator is a type. It is saying this thing cannot be resolved to a type. Create a class calculator. Why should I create it? It is coming from some third party library. So what I did, I added that third party library by add external archives and add this chart file. And see, no errors now. Now I can simply implement this addition. How? by saying calci dot add, that's it. And the entire addition functionality is implemented. Let's change this name to add salary. Now we need to call this add salary. How to call this add salary from banking? We need to create an object of banking. See, whenever we need to call any method from a class, we need to create an object of that class. Now I want to call add salary method. I need to create an object of banking class. But for that, I need main method. So main is not there. I'm going to add it. Main. So main is added. So there are some shortcuts which will make your life very easy while working on Eclipse. I'm going to let you know about all these, how I've added main or how I add system on print LN. So we'll be discussing about these shortcuts as well. Right. But now we need to call this add salary. How to call it? By creating an object of banking. Banking B equal to new banking. And then I'll say B dot add salary. Now, if you run this, if you run this, the entire functionality of adding is executed. Without rewriting the code, I have achieved this. I have not re-implemented the addition method. I've just called that addition method in my project, in my another project, and I'm able to execute it. I have implemented add salary without rewriting 500 lines of code just by calling this addition from a different project. With the help of this jar file. And if I talk about this jar file, this is what an API is. This is an API to American Express project. And if we are talking about Selenium, Selenium is one of the same thing. 
Selenium is available in a form of a single jar file or multiple collection of jar files. See, where you can download Selenium? You can download Selenium from the main website. I'll, I'll show you the steps. Calculator was a project. This jar file is an API to American Express. So this is a third party project. It acts as an API to MX. Right. Similarly, if we talk about Selenium, Selenium, American Express has not developed Selenium. But now American Express, if they want to automate their website, they can use Selenium like the same way they've added calculator. I'll show you how. Go to the main website of Selenium. That is selenium.dev. Go to downloads. So download over here and download this latest table version. Click on this. This will give you one single 10 MB jar file. See, this is the jar file you'll be needing. Let me expand and open it. This is a jar file, right? Just a 10.1 MB jar file. That is what your Selenium is. So I've already downloaded it in to a different location. Let me right click here, go to build path. See how to add a jar file. Right click on your project, go to build path, click on add external archives and then go to the location where you have downloaded the jar file. So I've downloaded inside D drive jars and this is my jar file. Click on open. And that's it. Selenium configuration is done. That is what all you need to work on Selenium. You need Java, you need Eclipse, you need one single 10 MB jar file. Now you can automate any website in the world easily. Right? Any questions so far? Let's see. Can we automate, uh, can we just launch a browser and navigate to a website? If I've added this jar file and let's see how easy it is. Okay, uh, there is uh, a question from Atul. In case of creation of object like a data type is calculator that must be same as the class name. Yes, exactly. Correct, Atul. Right, so now instead of this, what I'll do, I'll call a class called as Chrome driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver. See calculator, calc equal to new calculator because calculator was a class available in a different jar file. Now this jar file contains this jar, this class, Chrome driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver. I just added this and I'm going to add one more thing. Don't worry about that part. In tomorrow's session, I'm going to explain you the architecture of Selenium. Then I'll explain you what that part is. Don't worry about that part for the timing. Uh, the latest one is, uh, 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 I think, the latest one, even it is not the latest one, but still, that's fine. What this is, don't worry about it. I'm just going to add this along with the project. D forget about this, what I've added. Just look at this part. Initially, when I said calculator calc equal to new calculator, I was able to access the calculator functionality. Now I've written uh, Chrome driver driver equal to new Chrome driver. Now what happens? If I save this and run thing, what, what, what will happen if I run it? Let's see what happens. Let's see, the program is running. See, it says starting Chrome. Okay, it's erroring out. I know why, what the reason is. The reason is this exe file. What this exe file, I'll, I'll tell you. Just give me a moment. Let me delete some Chrome driver sessions from here. Chrome, 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 Chrome driver. Chrome driver. So what this is, uh, in order to explain you what this is, I need to explain you the architecture of Selenium. That we'll be covering it in our tomorrow session because we are already uh, like two hours in this session. So that architecture is a little interesting. So uh, we're gonna discuss that in tomorrow session. But for the timing, I'm getting the latest, uh, this exe file that I've added. 
and I'll show you. So I'll delete this one. And paste this one. Right. But you just forget about what I did for Chrome driver exe. Don't, don't worry about that part. Just focus on this. I just created an object of Chrome driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver. And as soon as I run this, as soon as I run this, let's see what happens. Starting Chrome and see a browser is launched. Chrome browser is launched just by writing Chrome driver driver equal to new new Chrome driver just by creating an object of Chrome driver class. A browser is launched. So how how come a browser is launched? Where where the code is written for launching a browser? Tell me where the code is written. Developer must have written some code for launching the code the browser jar file exactly the code is inside the jar file inside this jar file where inside this jar file where chrome driver class exactly in jar is a collection of lot of classes so chrome driver class is there inside this jar now where inside chrome driver class correct me Yuriga. How about others? Where, where, where inside Chrome driver class? Where that code is written, which is launching a browser? Developer must have written it. We are not worried about it because we are using it in a third party. We are using it in our project. We are not worried about what code is written and how much lines of code developer has written, which is launching a browser. Because we are not developing Selenium. Selenium is already developed. Method, Venkit, which method? Have we called any method? Have we called any method? We have not called any method as of now. It is written inside constructor exactly. Whosoever developer has created this class has created a constructor like we have created a constructor new Chrome driver, right? So uh, like calculator, we have created a calculator constructor. Same way, whosoever developer has created a Chrome driver class has created a constructor Chrome driver inside that he has written a code which is going to launch the Chrome browser. Now we are not worried about if he has written 500 lines of code or a very complex code to launch that browser because we are not developing Selenium. Selenium is already developed. That class is developed. All the methods are developed. Constructor are developed. We are just creating object of that class and we'll be calling method one by one. That's it. So if I write, even I write new Chrome driver, an object is created. Constructor will be called and you're going to see that it is going to launch the browser. So what happens? Uh, 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 exception. Actually, there are a lot of Chrome services running on my machine. That's the reason it's throwing error, but let me run it again. Is it still pointing to the old one? Just give me a moment. Because it launches and it quits. A lot of Chrome instance are running. Let's run it again. Come on, what happens? Let me see what is the browser version we are using. So our EXE should be compatible with the browser version. If it is not compatible, if your browser is updated to the latest version, it is version 88. And what I downloaded is version 89. See, that's the reason it is not working. Now it is automatically updating, but uh, let me stop it here and I'll download the 88 one. So this was the previous release. 
that's the reason i mean uh, it's not working let me download it so why we need it what is the role of this chrome driver exe that will be understanding it in our tomorrow session because in order to explain this i need to explain you the architecture of selenium just give me a moment let me extract this and let me kill these from the task manager but these are some crucial settings and these are some of the challenges that you may face when you are starting with uh, selenium at the very beginning these are some of the challenges that a lot of you might going to face and we're going to automate these challenges as well so in in tomorrow session we're going to see the automation of this part as well i'll going to automate process of downloading this exe as well let me delete it and paste this one now let's run this so now we have the same version file as of the browser version and let's hope the browser is not automatically updated to 89 now let's see Chrome driver started successfully and a browser is successfully launched. Right? No errors. Just an information. Chrome driver class is written in Chrome no Chrome driver class is not written in Chrome driver constructor. Inside this class there is a different constructor that holds the code for launching the browser. Now, in case you want to navigate to the website, you want to perform actions, click, type, then you need to call methods from this class. In the same way, like we did for calculator, so we need to create a reference. And now, if I say driver dot, I'll be able to see all the methods which are there inside this list. See, huge list of methods, right? Now, I'm going to call the very first method that is get. And what it is looking for? A URL in a form of a string. So, I'm going to say HTTP Google.com <coughs> and save this and run this. And you're going to see again a browser will be launched and this time it is going to navigate to Google.com. And one by one, I can call other methods and perform all other actions on the website and can automate the entire website. See, if I want to get the title of this page, the title is Google. The method is very straightforward. I'll say driver dot get. What we want to get? We want to get title. The method is get title. Now it is going to give us the title, but not print the title because printing task is not of Selenium. That is of Java. So how we print in Java? We put it inside system out print ln. And after printing the title, I want to close the browser. So simply say driver dot close. See, one by one, I'm writing the entire code, and this is a very simple code. Just create an object, call the method one by one, and you should be able to automate the entire website easily. Working on Selenium is very simple. Just your basic core Java concept should be clear. No record and play is required. See, it closed and Google is printed. Right? <coughs> so that's how we will be working on Selenium. Right? So uh, we have extended the class for 10 minutes, right? So uh, there, there's a lot more to cover in, in the initial demo part itself, right? Although uh, we have seen a lot of stuff today that how we're going to work on Selenium. Now in our tomorrow session, I'll be explaining you what all these components that we have listed down over here, right? What is the role of each and everything? What all things that we are going to cover in uh, the live sessions, right? And uh, how we can integrate all these things as well. 
so you should be able to understand why selenium learning selenium is very much beneficial even if you are starting your career as a manual tester so these are the things that we'll be looking at in our tomorrow session and all the other things like uh, enrollment and other process i'll be explaining tomorrow because we are running out of time we have already extended uh, to our session right so i really want i mean uh, in case you have enjoyed the session just join tomorrow at the same time and then i'll be explaining further part as well right so i hope you guys have enjoyed the session thanks abhya thanks uh, mayurika all right so yeah we'll be learning at the same pace today uh, was more theoretical concepts right but this is the only theory that we have in selenium from uh, coming sessions we'll be working on the coding part even for java we'll be doing the coding part as well thanks a lot guys thanks a lot thank you everyone so i hope to see you tomorrow at the same time right 8 pm india time thanks a lot guys thanks for joining in Thanks all guys